It's amazing how things change on the road when you change your perspective. In all my driving, I always thought that I slowed up enough for horse riders until a couple of years ago when I started to ride horses. And I suddenly realised that 40, 30 kilometres an hour is not really slowing up enough. You can never tell just from driving past what a horse is going to do or how good a rider is. So you need to come to almost a stop. And it really brought it home to me that for safe driving, for safe road use, you've got to look at things through the other person's eyes. Seeing things from the other road user's point of view can make you a much safer and more skillful driver. For instance, next time you, as a car driver, attempted to curse a truckie, try to imagine what it's like to wheel a semi through heavy traffic and think about the skills a good truck driver has to acquire. Racing driver Colin Bond agrees that drivers have to think about the other bloke. You know, here you are driving along in your nice little motor car that stops very well and there'll be a big semi-trailer, you know, in the lane beside you, so you'll, someone will dive across in front of him and put the brakes on because the lights will turn red, thinking that they can stop OK, but the poor old semi-trailer driver, for argument's sake, which may have 10 tonne or 50 tonne or something on the back, they require a little bit more distance to stop in, and I think you've got to be aware of those items and, and be a bit more considerate, you know, when you just don't sort of jump in and do those sort of things and, and think, well, I'm OK, Jack, and then if you are involved in an accident, you blame the other guy because you're under the back of you. We've all been delayed by a caravan on a winding road, but don't let that urge to get past kill you or someone else. Try to see things through the caravan driver's eyes. Remember, he's having to cope with a whole set of different problems. Caravan drivers also should consider other road users and make sure that their rigs are properly equipped and roadworthy. And they are personally up to the task of driving what amounts to be a small semi-trailer. Next time you see a cyclist, try to imagine how he or she is seeing the road and other traffic. And all drivers should think of themselves as pedestrians and try to imagine how the challenge of getting across the road looks to the young and the not so young. And even when we park legally, a lack of forethought can create a possible accident situation. See how this vehicle, added to the overgrown curbside shrub, makes it nearly impossible to see oncoming traffic at this stop sign. As drivers too, we should remind authorities of their responsibility not to create unnecessary roadside hazards. And just as drivers vary in their ability, so do cars. This braking demonstration from 80 kilometres an hour shows a dramatic difference between a tired, older car and a late model. And in looking at stopping distances, remember, reaction time can also vary greatly. For a driver that was tired or inattentive, or even worse, had some alcohol in his system, then reaction time stretches even further, perhaps out to a second or beyond, which means that the car travelling at 100 kilometres an hour has gone way past me before braking has even begun. If you stop and think about that, you can see how far into an accident that little bit of inattention might take you. They're racing. Johnson away smartly, absolutely jumped out of there. Whether or not he'll get racing, heat for jumping the start, we'll wait and see. John Bauer immediately on the outside of the decking, and they're looking for a chill one too. As they Johnson. held into the but carousel for the first time. Out there on the track, shocking start says, again in the AMD Ford Sierra. You could bank on that. Dick Johnson, I think, was... Well, there's one round, that's Andrew Bagel, number eight, requires Gulliver's a lot more Travels, you betcha. Away than what it does He's off on the edge doing, of the track. And we've got uh, basically most cars going the same way most of the time. Mercedes. And Mercedes. we don't have side streets and, and any uh, surprise interruptions like you do get on the road. So, you know, it's just as important to concentrate. Although you're not going that fast, that's reasonably irrelevant at the time because it's still to the point where somebody can come out of a side street or something like that and you don't even see them and you've got an accident on your hands. So you really must concentrate, you must know what's behind you, what's beside you the whole time you're driving. A lot of people just take it too casually and they think about what they're going to have for dinner that night or what bird they're going to go out with that night or something like that. So it's, it's one of those things that uh, they take too lightly and this is where they get into trouble. I think, this is my personal opinion, that uh, the only way we're going to combat the road toll uh, successfully is to teach the people how to drive. And this is what I've done with my son. He drives and drives extremely well. 
And I thought, well, there's no use saying, son, don't do over 60 kilometres an hour and uh, don't do this and don't do that, because you know damn well if they get in a car at 17 years of age, once they get around the first corner, like, everything has just gone out of the head because they're all airheads at about 17 and they, they know better than anyone else. And they just take off and do what they want. Well, I thought at least I'll give them a fighting chance and teach them how to drive properly.